This is a pigeon. This is one of the pigeons that we raised. Hi, buddy. Ready? Good boy. We'll do a little couple flights here, Jackie. Okay, so I'll just show you real quick. So once he come, came to my hand, right, I gave him a treat. So he's enjoying his treat right here. And then we'll send him to Jackie. So that's the next station for him. If you can see Jackie over there, there he goes. And then he gets a treat. Very simple, very basic foundation, okay? But it's very honest as well. So every time we ask him to do a behavior, he does the behavior, we reinforce the behavior. Okay, so that's very important to remember because as it applies to how you work with your animals at home, when you call your dog or your cat to you and you don't reinforce it, the behavior will extinguish. So now he's done it a couple times. He says, hey, when I fly to that hand, I get a reward, so I'm gonna try it even though he didn't call me. So because I didn't call him, it's pretty fair that I don't reinforce him for it, right? So very clear criteria, but now he's just offering behaviors all over the place because he knows we're positive. We've worked with him, he's lived with us, so we're not a, a, a threat to him. And so he's gonna just offer behaviors until he gets something. So I'm gonna set him up so that he actually gets something this time. So I'm gonna call him before he comes to me. Maybe Jackie will call him before she come, he comes to her. And then he can be a reinforcement of the behavior. Or he can say, I'm out of here. Okay. So I did call him there, right? So he offered up the behavior. He flew around in a circle and I called him back so I reinforced him, right? So that's the rule. If you call him, you reinforce him. Go ahead, Jackie. But what he did there was a nice thing too because a lot of times when animals are working with you and they don't really get the idea of what you're doing, like he was a little bit frustrated there, flew back and forth and didn't get anything, so we offer the behavior, right? You simply offer the behavior. And so what I did there is I offer my hand, therefore I capture that behavior. Right? Especially on busy days like this, they love cruising around the warehouse. Yeah. So already dead. And so he eats, you know, all those disgusting rotting carcasses you see on the side of the road. Those are Kern's specialty. They're his favorite. And you know, the riper the better, because turkey vultures, they find their food using a sense of smell. And so when they're flying around, they're smelling for decay. So those nice fresh carcasses, those are Kern's favorite. And also, if you look at Kern, you notice he has a nice bald head, doesn't he? Yeah, and that bald head, you can use that. And he can stick and he doesn't have to worry at all about his nice feathers getting all dirty. And you know, vultures, they play a very important role in our ecosystem. Could you imagine what it would be like if there weren't vultures around to clean up all the roadkill and all the um, animals and all the carcasses around here? Well, here's a fun fact for you. A turkey vulture like Kern, he can actually, in one year's time, eat one deer carcass. And so this little falcon right here, this is a lanner falcon. And lanner falcons are an African species of falcon. And what Fong is going to be doing is he's going to be showing you exactly how a falcon is going to catch another bird mid-air. And so Fung is going to have with him a lure. It's a tiny piece of leather. And that lure is actually going to simulate how a real prey bird would try to fly away and escape a falcon and how the falcon's gonna try to outmaneuver and try to catch that bird mid-air. And so our little lantern falcon's looking around checking all, all of you out, you're a pretty attractive audience. 